Welcome back to Sprague River Homestead. So in today's video, I'm basically gonna pick a fight about whether solar power is really worth it. Now before we get going on the battle over solar power and if it's really worth it, make sure you check out a lot of our other videos on homesteading, rabbits, chickens, goats, and even gardening, and of course, solar power. Like and share this video with all your friends who think solar power is or is not really worth the cost. So those that have watched the channel for a long time know that we put in solar, off-grid solar, five years ago. Now, the previous owners of our property 15 years ago went to the power company to investigate actually putting in grid-tied power, and it was a cost of $250,000 to put in power to this property where we are today. Now the closest transmission lines to us are high voltage transmission lines, which means they are not house voltage. And that $250,000 meant that they would have to put in a transformer station, run power lines approximately one mile, at least one mile down into our property and connect that to the house. So five years ago, we put in $20,000 into a 6,000 watt panel system with a backup generator dual inverters, dual chargers, and 16 batteries that's approximately 40,000 watts. So when you look at those numbers, well, 250,000 over here, 20,000 over here, you could probably say absolutely solar power was worth the investment. But what if they had the transformer station already put in and they had to literally just run the poles and the lines down to the house? Now it's approximately one mile down here into our property and a neighboring property had that quoted in they are a quarter mile from actually transmission lines and it was about twenty five thousand dollars to be able to put those from the power lines into their property so looking at ours knowing that it's approximately one mile from those lines down in let's equate that out to a hundred thousand dollars to run power to this property so looking at a hundred thousand versus 20,000, solar power is definitely going to be worth it. Now in those two cases, I really feel like the deck is stacked against grid tied power. The installation cost is prohibitively expensive and it doesn't really even make sense to have this video to talk about doing solar power when it's a quarter to a tenth the cost of doing grid tied power. But what if our property was actually grid tied when we bought it? There is no installation cost. All we have to do is pay our monthly bill. Now over the last five years, I have kept up on how much power we typically use on a monthly basis so that I knew eventually I could put together this video on how much it costs to pay for the grid tide versus how much it's gonna to be to pay for an off-grid system installation. So over the last five years, we have paid approximately a thousand dollars worth of grid tied power now how this breaks down is four months of the year we typically use approximately 30 kilowatt hours per day so 120 days a year we use about 30 kilowatt hours a day now the other eight months of the year we use approximately 20 kilowatt hours a day now the 30 kilowatt hours a day is during the high speed of summer where we do a lot of incubation, we have a lot of pads running, we use a lot of water, which takes a lot of power to run all of that equipment. Now the local power company charges approximately 9.8 cents per kilowatt hour. So how that equates to the four months we use a lot more power, that equates to approximately $352. Now the eight months of the year that we use only 20 kilowatt hours a day, that's approximately $470 with the 9.8 cents per kilowatt hour. Now, in addition to that, there's also a $9.50 charge for service on top of the usage. So approximately that's $1,000 per year of power for equivalent on grid. So there again, that becomes our benchmark, $1,000 per year for a return on investment. Now it gets interesting when you start talking about if solar power is really worth it. So five years ago, like I said, we put in $20,000 into a solar system. That includes 6,000 watts and panels, racking, all power lines running from here into the system, chargers, inverters, transformers, and a battery bank. 
Now, five years later, that is worth approximately $25,000. So it's gone up about $5,000 in the last five years for the equipment. So now if you're looking at how much would you save versus how much would you spend, if you spent 20 grand to put in a system that you thought would last for a while, you're gonna save $1,000 based on my math and what it would use. It doesn't look like it's a very good value, right? You're gonna spend $1,000 a year and have almost no maintenance cost to go with it. Where our solar system, I spend about $175 a year in oil changes, water for the batteries, and my time to do all that. It kind of stacks against solar. Now also in addition to the batteries, those are gonna last approximately eight to 10 years. So on the best case, if our lead acid batteries last 10 years, you know that every 10 years, you're gonna to have to spend four to $5,000 to replace those batteries. That stacks pretty, pretty heavily against solar, doesn't it? Now another thing to consider, your solar panels are rated for 30 years or at least ours are, they're rated for 30 years, and at 30 years, they will be able to produce only 80% of their power. So if you said, well, my system, I'm only gonna use it for 30 years, which means I'm gonna have to have three sets of batteries, and two of those sets are at 5,000 bucks a piece, you're gonna have $30,000 into a system that lasts 30 years. So at that point, at a 30 year return, you're gonna pay $30,000 in grid savings, maybe if it doesn't go up you're going to pay thirty thousand dollars in investment at the 30 year mark you might break even let's say the maintenance of 175 dollars a year goes up a little bit because petroleum and other things if you change oil it go up slightly but your power bill is probably going to raise just the same or more on a long enough timeline solar power is probably definitely worth it because you can't really put a dollar figure on the safety of always having power, you never lose anything in the fridge or freezers, and you never have to worry on those big storms that an oak tree is gonna fall on your power lines and short out your whole house. Now, one thing to note, in my cost of solar, my setup doesn't include the labor because we did it all ourselves. We had family that has an electrical spot I'm an engineer by background and we self-designed this system so we only paid for the equipment. I never include labor. If you're gonna buy a system for solar, I would say double that cost to probably about 50,000, 40 to $50,000 for installation if you're gonna have a solar company do it because of licensing, skill set, and design time. All of that is probably gonna be it. So now, over 30 years, could you pay back $50,000 by going off grid? Mmm. Now it's starting to get interesting and really to being debatable. And I'm probably gonna say if you had the chance to go off grid, the security and safety of it, and more of the peace of mind, may be the deciding factor, and that's on an individual basis. Now if you're going off grid or you're grid tied, of course these costs are gonna change they're going to be different based on location, and they're gonna be different, obviously, based on how much power you use, where you are, who does the labor, and probably 10 other things that I haven't even mentioned. But I'd like to know, do you think solar's worth it? Yes, no, maybe, it depends. Well, that's up to you. But I'll say, leave your comments down below. Am I full of baloney? Or is solar power really worth the dream of being completely off-grid and having nobody to worry about. That's it. Thanks for stopping by Sprague Homestead. We'll see you next time.